Welcome, in this lecture we are going to talk about time optimal control of a buck converter and we need to we want to identify what are the performance limit. So, in this lecture we will first talk about what are the time optimal recovery in a buck converter under load step transient, under reference step transient and what are the performance limit and the design conflict. So, here if we take a buck converter you know we know about the turn on turn off time and they are equivalent current I mean under on time when the switch is on high side switch then how does the inductor current look like when the switch is off how does the inductor current and the output voltage look like we all know and if we have discussed in our earlier NPTEL course in, in lecture number 48 that if we want to move from one operating condition to the other load current condition in one switching action this blue color is the turn on trajectory and the red one is the turn off trajectory then how to achieve that we have discussed and this optimal trajectory control was discussed in this paper 1978. So, then we have also discussed in lecture number 48 in our earlier NPTEL course that if we consider this one load current condition to the other load current. So, this is like operating condition 1, this is operating condition 2 and these are their corresponding time domain waveform. And in order to achieve in the one switching action then we know that how does the switch uh, capacitor current look like then how does the output waveform look like and that is the fastest transient response. Now in the time optimal control under this so it is basically the capacitor charge balance that means whenever there is a load step transient the sudden inductor current cannot change immediately so the whole load step will appear across the capacitor current and because the capacitor current is negative for a load step of transient the output voltage will dip as long as the capacitor current is negative. Once the capacitor current start crossing the zero current then the voltage will start rising. So, in order to get the output voltage to its previous operating point we need to balance this negative charge with the positive charge and that is whole concept of time optimal control. And if we want to find out what is this time T1, what is this time T2 and what is this time T3 so that we can get the total recovery time from here to here that is the sorry the total recovery time here here is nothing but it is a sum of t1 plus t2 that means this is my total recovery time the point where the output voltage again will reach steady state is, is earlier operating point so you can find t1 t2 and t3 from this expression and these things are detailed uh, discussed in detail in lecture 48 in our earlier course so then we can find out the peak current, peak current means if we consider the peak current with respect to capacitor. So, this is nothing but with respect to the next operating point. So, this is my I peak, this difference. So, peak means what is the additional current is goes over the new operating steady state point. Then we have discussed how to find out this peak current and these are the step by step derivation. How to find out T1, T2, T3, then finally what is the total time that means under T1, T2, T3 these are the step then what is Q1? So, area under this curve how to find out then how to find out uh, Q1 expression in terms of load step size and the slope then how to find out Q2? So, Q2 in terms of this peak current M1, M2 slopes then if you do charge balance then sum of the charge will be 0 then from there we can find out the peak current expression and the, it turns out to be that peak current will be simply due to, due to ratio by the load step size. That means, if we assume uh, you know from this charge balance expression, we are not considering the, the variation in the output voltage in the slope. If we consider then the expression will be some, it will be more complex. So, under the ideal assumption that means the slopes are same, it remains unaffected, then you will get the peak current in terms of square root of duty ratio into load step size. Then if we want to find out the total recovery time that we have discussed 
that will be sum of t1, t2, t3 and it turns out to be the recovery time depend on L into delta I0 divided by the reference like steady state output voltage into root D by 1 minus root D and we will discuss whether it will increase or decrease. So, from here it can be it is clear that means for the given duty ratio given output voltage the and given load step size the recovery time can be decreased by reducing the inductor value. That means if we reduce the inductor value it will recover faster as a result you will get faster recovery, but a smaller inductor will lead to larger uh, current ripple and that may increase the conduction law. So, that is the penalty. Okay. Then for the given inductor if the inductor is fixed low type is low step size is fixed output voltage is fixed. If the input voltage decreases that means the duty ratio increases then it can be shown that this term will go up for increasing duty ratio because this will go up and this will go up. So, 1 minus d will be smaller and it is in the denominator. So, as a result the overall term will increase. So, that means the worst case you know recovery time will be at the lowest input voltage or the highest duty ratio. Okay. Similarly, it depends on the load step size. Now, if we apply the chart balance we can find the undershoot expression that means this undershoot and it turns out to be the undershoot is a strong function of the characteristic impedance that means we know the characteristic impedance is square root of L by C. So, if we can make the characteristic impedance 0 because in traditionally majority of the power supply we generally take small inductor large cap and then the this is small by that we can reduce the output uh, you know undershoot. But I will show you in this lecture it can be counterproductive for the reference voltage transient. So, for load transient either we can reduce the inductor to reduce the undershoot that will have an effect in terms of current ripple will increase. We can increase the capacitor, but that will penalize the power density because the size of the you know uh, capacitor will increase and and this will also and uh, you know decrease the reliability because the larger cap is more unreliable I mean reliability will decrease. And also the undershoot will be affected at higher duty ratio will get a higher undershoot larger undershoot that means under smallest input voltage condition or lowest input voltage condition you will get the maximum undershoot. So, now if we summarize the peak current again the peak current will be maximum for the largest duty ratio the recovery time will be maximum for the larger duty ratio and the output voltage. So, the worst case will be V in mean minimum value of V in for a given output voltage okay, for the given load step size you will get everything highest that means peak current highest recovery time largest and the undershoot largest for the minimum value of input voltage where this will lead to D max the maximum duty ratio. Okay. Now, if you go for a reference transient this is again discussed in lecture 53 in our earlier course we can show that you know lecture 53 we have discussed we can show that the recovery time can be it is count intuitive that for large reference transient for changing one voltage to the other voltage you have to make changes half c that means half c output cap v1 square minus v2 square that means energy requirement will increase if the capacitor size increases because we want to change from one v1 to other v v1 to v2 that value is fixed. So, if the capacitor is large larger energy is required and that will come through the inductor. So, you will have a larger current overshoot as well as the larger recovery time. So, what we want to find that if we calculate the peak current it will be just opposite to the characteristic impedance. So, this is nothing but 1 by z c right into square root of 2 into 1 minus d into v0 into delta v ref and if we consider the uh, you know the recovery time it is square root of L c into square root of 2 delta V r divided by 1 minus d into V 0. So, what we want to mean the recovery time will increase for larger value of inductor as well as the larger value of capacitor in case of reference transient. 
and it can be shown even for a larger duty ratio also it will increase. So, that means if we compare the reference transient versus load transient, for load transient we know the peak current depends on the duty ratio for a given load step size, but for reference transient that means for higher duty ratio the peak current is higher, but if you take a reference transient the peak current depends on the capacitor and this should be actually delta V ref not D V ref delta V ref this is delta V ref that is the difference in the voltage that means what voltage you want to change. So, the peak current increases with the larger capacitor and smaller inductor that means it is just the opposite if you take the peak current. So, peak current does not depends too much for load transient response with the L and C, but if we go to recovery time in case of step load transient we know the smaller inductor will reduce the recovery time and the smaller eco, smaller inductor will also reduce the recovery time for the reference transient, but it will increase the peak current because it is in the denominator. If we take the output undershoot for the load transient we will need L by C that means smaller inductor larger capacity is desirable, but it is just the opposite for the peak current. If you take a large gap you will get a very high peak current for the reference transient and if you take a small L it will also increase. If you take the recovery time the large capacity will increase the recovery time. So, that means it gives rise to a design conflict that means for load step transient we need small L and large C, but this is conflicting for the reference transient. So, for ref reference transient we need small c because if you take small c it will reduce the peak current as well as the recovery time. In fact, if you go for envelope tracking power supply for if you use a buck converter for envelope tracking the capacity is very very small almost negligibly small otherwise it will simply limit the bandwidth of the converter ok. And so, generally requirement for reference transient is small c that is conflicting with the load transient response. But if we go for reference uh, for reference transient the choice of inductor is something you have to be very careful because if you take a small l the recovery time can be reduced or the bandwidth can be increased, but the peak current can be high. But if you are trying to track a sinusoidal current difference then it is desirable you can have a small l also. This is for sinusoidal tracking it is for sinusoidal tracking this is better ok for sine wave tracking. But if you are going for reference transient tracking reference step then L can lead to large smaller L can lead to higher peak current. So, you have to be careful. So, the conflicting current criteria low step transients smaller inductor help to reduce recovery time and voltage undershoot, but for a reference transient smaller inductor actually significantly increases the peak current. So, that is a conflict. Then if we take the capacitor large capacitor actually reduces the undershoot under load transient, but it significantly increases the peak current as well as the recovery time for the reference transient. So, this leads to a conflicting power stage design conflicting. So, this gives rise to a conflict in power stage design. Okay. In summary we have discussed time optimal control in a buck converter for load transient, we have discussed for reference transient and we have also discussed what are the performance limit and what are the fastest possible performance that can be achieved and along with we have discussed what are the design conflicts. So, now with digital control in the subsequent lecture we want to discuss how can we implement such near time optimal or the time optimal algorithm using digital control and that cannot be achieved that performance can be almost fastest performance can be achieved, but that can never be achieved using small signal based design. So, this is where the beauty of the digital control will come that how can we achieve this time optimal recovery using digital control and then only we can claim that we can significantly improve the performance and efficiency compared to the you know analog control. 
that's it for today thank you very much